Agriculture, National Food Security Council assures Nigerians. The key factors considered by committee. MPC reduces monetary policy rate to 11.5% to ensure growth in the economy. We are therefore directing all our members to get back to operations with immediate effect. NATO suspends strike after consultation. Plus, road carnage. FRSC re-strategizes to meet UN goal. Welcome to NTA Network News tonight. I'm Ian V. John. Adiola Kaumia Karen will be reading with me from our Lagos Network Center. Thanks for joining us. Tonight, we begin from the State House, where issues relating to ecology and development dominated discussions as President Mamadou Buhari granted audience to the Governor of Kwara State, Abdurrahman Abdul Razak. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu reports that the President also received Governor Abdullahi Umar Gandaje of Kano State. The weekend we had a huge rainstorm that destroyed about 5,000 houses in the state capital. Governor Abdurrahman Abdul Razak told President Muhammad Buhari that there was also huge flooding in Kwara North and the banks of River Niger, as a result of which nearly 15,000 people were displaced and thousands of hectares of farmlands submerged. Kwara State, he said, needs urgent federal government intervention. We were expecting bumper harvest this season, especially with the federal government's intervention in the agricultural sector. Um, but unfortunately, um, we are going to lose this harvest and we hope we'll be able to um, gain ground. We also thank the federal government that they gave us a 10,000 hectare irrigation scheme to boost our dry season farming. That project is on course now. Already NEMA is on ground in Quara, um, taking data. Um, so we believe the circle will be shorter this time. He enumerated blankets, buckets, food, building materials, as well as agricultural impulse as things urgently needed to help the people recover. Now we're talking about anywhere between 5 to 10 billion naira in losses. He said the Kwara state government has started doing the little it can under the prevailing situation by distributing palliatives to those in need. Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduji of Kano State also came calling on a mission to say thank you to President Muhammad Buhari for supporting Nigeria's Center of Commerce in battling the COVID-19 pandemic. I have to thank Mr. President for assisting Kano State to the 5 billion naira and that has assisted the state. We opened five testing centers which are functional. The curve is now flattened. We carry out testing maximally, but at the same time, the positivity ratio is very low. So it's dying down almost on daily basis. Governor Ganduje also briefed the president on his efforts at achieving and maintaining the desired peace enterprise across Kano State. Kano is calm, is rel relatively peaceful and Kano is one of the most peaceful states in the country as of today. He said apart from constituting a joint task force on security, his administration also constructed what he called security dormitories on major roads to promptly respond to emergencies. A military training ground and Ruga settlement within Falgore Forest were also established. So also community policing as well as interreligious and interethnic committees as part of efforts to maintain peace, harmony and security. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And still in the State House, the National Food Security Council is reassuring Nigerians that the nation will not experience any food crisis in spite of the devastating impact of the recent flooding in parts of the country on agriculture. Vice Chairman of the Council and Governor of Kebe State, Abu Bakr Atiku Bagudu, gave the assurance while briefing newsmen after the fifth technical meeting of the Council members in the State House, where Adamu Sambu again reports. 
meeting presided over by the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, was convened to critically analyze available information and data on Nigeria's food situation and what needs to be done urgently towards responding to the threat posed by the recent flooding in parts of the country on agriculture. Consequently, NEMA, Banks of Agriculture and Industry, NISAL, and Nexim Bank, who have important roles to play in the nation's drive towards achieving food security, were invited for briefing. This is part of efforts towards creating synergy and collaboration needed to unlock the desired funding for the agricultural sector. The meeting also looked at how the federal government responded to the 2018 flood disaster as a model for possible adoption in response to the prevailing situation. Is there going to be a food crisis? No. By God's grace, there will be none. The, the flooding is, devast is devastating. But Mr. President has been working, as you can evidently see from last week to today, we are having another meeting because that's what what bothers Mr. President more than anything else. How does he deliver to Nigerians? And since last week and week and earlier, the challenge has been come up with how we can intervene so that farmers, fishermen, and those in the animal husbandry can go can can resume economic activity as quickly as possible. On the issue of prices of crops. Even in Abuja, you will not see the price drop immediately. Prices started dropping at the local markets. Those that have existing stock will not lose money and drop the price for you. They will wait until they exhaust the stock or there is a lot of this uh, produce in the market. Then they will be forced to, to, to drop the prices. So the crop has started coming up, getting cheaper and being transported. It takes time depending on how fast the traders are bringing the cheaper stock into the market. The roadmap and recommendations from the meeting will be forwarded to President Muhammadu Buhari for consideration. On his part, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State gives an update on the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic in his state. We have not had any death. And then drastic reduction in even people that are supposed to be taken to isolation centers. We are able to address that by identifying areas where we see concentration of the disease and also control the spread. Governor Lalong said the more testing the better for Nigeria as it strives towards controlling and containing the global pandemic. From the State House, Adamu Sambu. News. The Secretary General of the African Continental Free Trade Area Secretariat, Wam Kelly Mene, has called on Nigeria to accelerate the ratification of the treaty as other countries look up to it for leadership. He was speaking when he visited the leadership of the Senate. Ignatius Unko reports. Nigeria is the second country Wam Kelly Mene is visiting since assumption of office in February of this year, and a meeting with members of the National Assembly became handy. The African Continental Free Trade Zone Agreement is aimed at inclusive growth and overall regional integration of the continent. This meeting was to remind Nigeria's apex law-making body that the aim of the free trade zone can only be realized if Nigeria plays a leading role in the trade arrangement. We are hoping and looking forward to Nigeria's leadership. It is because all of these visions that we expressed in the Lagos Plan of Action, in the Abuja Treaty, started here. And he observed the challenge African manufactured goods will face as a result of transshipment of goods from other continents, but explained that measures will be put in place to address it. Deputy Leader of the Senate, Ajayi Borofis, restated Nigeria's resolve to regional integration. The Senate and the National Assembly are ever committed to providing legislative support. The initial momentum from the signing of the agreement needs to be continued for a greater continental impact to benefit Africans both on the continent and outside it. The visiting team had met with some top government officials and will be meeting with the private sector before departing the country from the National Assembly. Ignatius and Quo, NTN News.
In other news, with the lingering uncertainties in the global economy associated with the COVID-19 pandemic and volatilities in oil prices, the Central Bank of Nigeria Monetary Policy Committee ended its meeting with a call on the monetary authorities to reduce lending rates so as to encourage small businesses in the country. Chimobi Water Unaji now reports. Monetary policy rates in an attempt to reinvigorate the Nigerian economy as the outlook on broader economy remains largely uncertain. The Monetary Policy Committee, after its fifth meeting for the year, decided to reduce the key rates by 100 basis points to 11.5%, while placing the asymmetric corridor at plus 100 and minus 700 basis points around the MPR to help ensure liquidity and growth in the economy. While reading the communique, the CBN governor, Godwin Emefile, said the MPC also resolved after divergent votes to retain the liquidity ratio at 30%, while cash reserve ratio CRR was left unchanged at 27.5%. The key factors considered by committee as likely to exert upward pressure on domestic prices in the near term includes the prevalence of security challenges in the country, adverse weather conditions causing flooding in some farming regions, the increase in petroleum pump price, deregulation in the electricity tariffs, tariffs, low crude oil prices, and exchange rate adjustment. The governor, Godwin Emefiele, while blaming the fall in purchasing managers' index on lockdown measures, noted that the decision of the committee to change the controlling rates was informed by the need to observe the impact of steps already taken under a massive intervention plan to save the economy from COVID-19 pressures. In Abuja, Chimubu Walter Naji, NT News. The federal government has set up an 11-member ministerial task force to recover all unpaid revenue from lottery operators and permit holders in Nigeria from 2015 to date. Minister of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, George Akume, inaugurated the task force in Abuja with a two-month deadline for the assignment. Mitari Igbe reports. Lottery operators in the country are said to have been evading remittance of statutory taxes and shortchanging government of revenue running into billions of naira annually. Now, the Minister of Special Duties, George Akume, is moving to support the National Lottery Commission to take measures that will end the trend. Definitive measures must be taken. A special task force being mandated to put an end to the colossal loss of revenue in the lottery industry and charge them to determine what funds are owed to government from 2015 to 2020 and facilitate the immediate recovery of such funds to government coffers. If, say, for instance, we start this uh, implementation by fourth quarter of next year on the central monetary platform, I can uh, say that it's before the year is over, and I'm being conservative, before next year is over, we'll make about $8 billion, And the following years, we'll be making at least minimum of $20 billion for the next uh, two, three years. The task force, chaired by the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Affairs, William Alu, has representatives from the National Lottery Trust Fund, the Nigeria Police Force, and the EFCC among members. In Abuja, Mitaire Ikben, NTA News. Now talking politics, the Independent National Electoral Commission has presented certificate of return to Governor Godwin Obaseki and Philip Schreiber of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, signifying the official recognition of the pair as the Governor-elect and Deputy Governor-elect of Edo State following their victory at the September 19 election. Agatha Eguari Ujo has details. Hereby certify that Godwin Noge Hase Obasaki of People's Democratic Party has been elected to the office of Governor of Edo State. INEC National Commissioner in Charge of Edo, Delta, Bielsa and Rivers States, May Agbamuche Mbu, presented the certificates of return to Governor Gordon Obasaki and his deputy, Philip Shaibu. She urged the governor to see his victory as an opportunity to usher in a new beginning for the state. We have always maintained that a successful conducted election is a collective effort and for, for so it has proven to be. This ceremony is just another fulfillment of the provisions of the law. 
Governor Basaki promised to use his second term in office to work more for the people. The governor commended the electoral umpire, the police and other security agencies for their efforts before, during and after the election. The ability of INEC to, to view results as the counting has taken place in the units is one innovation that we will employ INEC to insist on and improve. He called on aggrieved members to join hands with him to develop the state. In Benin, Agatha Eguari Ojo, NTA News. Similarly, the Benin Traditional Council has expressed gratitude to President Mamadou Buhari for ensuring a free, fair and violent free election in Edo State. The Council, on behalf of the Oba of Benin, also appreciated all security agencies, the political parties and candidates for honouring the peace accord of the National Peace Commission headed by General Abdusalam Abu Bakr, as well as the Independent National Electoral Commission for the peaceful and successful process. A statement by the Secretary to the Benin Traditional Council, Frank Irabo, while congratulating Governor Godwin Obaseke on his re-election, reaffirmed the Council's commitment to remain non-partisan and urged the people to support the government in achieving its developmental strides. Meanwhile, the President's Court of Appeal, Justice Monica Dogma Messam, has established the election petitions, tribunal secretariat, and accordingly, constituted a panel in respect of the governorship election conducted in Edo State. The Chief Judge of Edo State, Justice Edigin, has equally approved the use of Edo High Court Complex Election Petition Court Hall, Sapler Road, for the tribunal sitting. A statement by the Court Secretary, Sandy Martins, says the Secretariat is now open while all inquiries are to be directed to the Secretary. FG gets thumbs up for improved humanitarian access in North East. Details in the second part of tonight's news. Do stay. My dear Lord, don't be your mate. Be no day for your bread. If he knock you a bata, you tell no go to hell. Anytime I want to celebrate, it goes so the party no delay. Do it this with me like it's chocolate. Do my tell her no they disappoint. Oh, tell her we go have a university. Oh, yo, yo, yo. If they knock on me, knock on me, knock on me. You no go the job like a baka. If you see my tell her.
AC motors are clearly built with one purpose in mind. They are built to serve. Elizade Autoland, sole distributor of JAC Motors in Nigeria. If you run mad, we know what you think Every time now this phone, have you gone to buy more units for light? <laughs> Give me this phone! Ha! They don't finally get you. Enter store, you go see one pink nylon. Bring and come. Eh? If you try and. Chicken, where they use gonna look me? Now you want to down one. Oh, <laughs> so now why you send me a message when you get with this? Shut it. Make yourself begin the enjoy credit and data. Berekete. Introducing Berekete. Activate a new glow sale and get 600 Naira free credit plus 700% bonus on every recharge and up to 100% bonus on data plans. <laughs> Find your first with Berekete Glow Unlimited. Good afternoon. I want this. Okay, sir, but why not go for this bigger screen? The resolution is better too, but my yes. expensive. I will spend more and I will go for this. Johnny, I am your future self. And as you can see, our future looks great. Don't ruin it by spending indiscriminately. Splurge a little, but think about our tomorrow. Save more for later. Sorry, I will save money and go for this. Save more for later by adding voluntary contributions to your retirement savings account with Stambic IBTC Pension Managers. Call 01-271-6000 to open the Stambic IBTC Pension account today. Stambic IBTC Pension Managers, a member of Standard Bank Group. Interministerial Committee for the Celebration of Nigeria's 60th Independence Anniversary, the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, invites you to the following events. Thursday, 24th September, World Press Conference, Venue, of Basanjo Hall, Federal Secretariat, Phase 2, Time, 3 p.m. Friday, 25th, Public Lecture, Venue, National Mosque Conference Hall, Time, 10 a.m. Special Jumat Prayers, 1 p.m. at the same venue. Sunday, 27th, Inter National Church Service, National Christian Center, Abuja, time 3 p.m. Members of the public can join the church service virtually by logging on to the YouTube channel of the OSGF at Official OSGF NG. Monday 28, launch of the National Ethics and Integrity Policy, as well as Integrity Award by Mr. President, to commemorate the 20th anniversary of ICPC. Venue, State House, Presidential Villa, Abuja, time 10 a.m. Historical Exhibition, National Press Center, Radio House, Abuja, Abuja, 3 p.m. Thursday, October 1st, Guard of Honor, Anniversary Parade, Eagle Square, Abuja, time 10 a.m. Anniversary theme, together. Please note, these events are strictly by invitation and all COVID-19 protocols will be adhered to. Chairman, Media and Publicity Subcommittee, announcer. Love it. Thank you for staying. Amidst international concerns on the activities of terrorist and violent extreme groups in the Northeast, the United Nations has commended the federal government's efforts to improve humanitarian support in the region, saying the Buhari administration has taken important steps to improve access to people in need. Lately, some international humanitarian non-governmental organizations, NGOs, have expressed a worry on their inability to operate effectively and distribute relief materials in parts of the Northeast because of security concerns, especially in some remote areas of Borno State. In a bid to reverse the trend and ensure effective access to vital food supplies, the Humanitarian Affairs Minister, the National Security Advisor and members of the National Humanitarian Coordination Committee escalated the matter to the Presidency. The President then mandated the Vice President to work with the Committee, Governors in the region and relevant MDAs, including Service Chiefs, to resolve the matter in conjunction with international NGOs and multilateral agencies operating in the region. In reaction to this intervention and new arrangement, the United Nations Secretariat, in a briefing last week by the Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs and Emergency Relief Coordinator, Mark Lowcock, to the UN Secretary Council, Security Council said he is pleased to report they have had constructive engagements in recent days with the Nigerian authorities. 
The federal government has reassured Nigerians that the National Water Resources Bill 2020, currently making its way through the National Assembly, when passed into law, will enhance the Nigeria water sector in line with global best practices. This was the submission of the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohammed, and his water resources counterpart, Suleiman Adamu, at a media briefing in Abuja. Anthony Forsen reports. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed gave a background to the bill. He said it is an amalgamation of water resources laws that have been in existence dating back 2004. The bill provides for professional and efficient management of all surface and groundwater for the use of the people, i.e. for domestic and non-domestic use, for irrigation, for agricultural purposes, for generation of hydroelectric energy, for navigation, for fisheries, and even for recreation. The bill, when passed, will ensure that the nation's water resources are protected, used, developed, conserved, managed, and controlled in a sustainable manner for the benefit of all persons. To this end, both public and private sector investment will be encouraged. Capacity building will be enhanced to foster good governance and the establishment of water use and licensing framework for a sustainable financing for water sector development from tariff. However, the bill has generated so much controversy. Many of those criticizing the bill have never bothered to even read its provisions. Those deepening thus depending on second-hand information to reach their conclusions. The Water Resources Minister chronicled the gains inherent in the sector when the bill is passed into law. Uh, the whole idea behind this bill, uh, when all the major stakeholders of the world and following Nigeria's adoption of the, the concept of uh, integrated, river basin, integrated water resources management, an international concept of management of water resources all over the world. Uh, there was, you know, the water stakeholders in Nigeria felt that there was a need to update the, 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 the regulations that exist. He however cited dangers being posed by indiscriminate sinking of boreholes across the country. The Supreme Court has fixed the 27th of November for ruling on an application asking it to set aside its 2019 judgment ordering Shell Nigeria Development Company to pay damages to some oil producing communities in Bayelsa State. This came after arguments were taken on a preliminary objection to the application. Femi Okio reports. On the 7th of January 2019, the Supreme Court delivered a judgment in a matter against the Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria, ordering the company to pay damages running into hundreds of millions of naira to various oil-producing communities in Bayelsa State. And just as the judgment creditors began to take steps to take benefit of the judgment, Shell, through their counsel, Wadala Nupekun, are now back before the Supreme Court to ask the nation's apex court to set aside its judgment. Before taking that application, the communities, through their counsel, Luscious Unwosu, filed a preliminary objection to the application for the setting aside of the judgment, telling the court that the application constitutes a scandalous deliberate abuse and ridicule of the integrity and finality of the Supreme Court of Nigeria. But Chief Wolola Nupekun said that the preliminary objection had nothing in it to show that the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction to entertain his application. The Supreme Court will now, on the 27th of November, decide if the preliminary objection has merit or whether to go ahead and take the application urging it to set aside its January 2019 judgment. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NTA News. And the way from court, the Nigerian Association of Road Transport Owners has suspended its planned warning strike after reaching an agreement for extension of the implementation of the 45,000 litres petrol tracks compliance to January 2021. NATO President Yusuf Lawal Offman says the decision was taken following the intervention of critical stakeholders in the industry. Lydia Samson reports. 
says it is not unmindful of the federal government's desire to maintain its road networks for utilization by the citizens. According to NATO President Yusuf Lawal Otman, the only bone of contention is the lack of engagement of its members, which has already been addressed with ongoing consultations, which led to the agreement. Following the intervention of the group managing director of the NNPC and the DG SSS, and the directive that we maintain the status quo, go back to status quo. We are therefore directing all our members to get back to operations with immediate effect while negotiation continue. He said the grace given will enable its members commence the process of changing their trucks to comply with the government's new directive. As partners in progress, the president says NATO will continue to work closely with government to serve Nigerians to the best of their ability. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. In honor of her gallantry and supreme sacrifice to her fatherland, the Nigerian Air Force has named a remodeled pilot screw room at the 115 Special Operations Group, Nigerian Air Force, Port Harcourt, after the first female combat pilot, late flying officer, Tolulokwe Arotile, to immortalize her. Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, inaugurated the building during a one-day working visit to Port Harcourt. Robinson, the Ratiedi, reports. A pilot screw building as a well-furnished city room, a computer room, and bedrooms where pilots can relax and plan the execution of missions. The building was remodeled and named after the late Tulu Lokpe Arotile in recognition of a sacrifice to the country and to motivate personnel in the course of service. Chief of the Air Staff, Sadiq Kabubaka, noted that no less than 12 women motivated by the role played by the late Tulu Lokpe are already undergoing training within and outside the country to join the Nigerian Air Force. In immortalizing flying officer Arotile today, we are not only hoping to honor her memory, but also to further inspire young girls in Nigeria to be motivated to study, work hard, and to pursue their dreams and legitimate aspirations with pride and honor. Some female colleagues of the late Tolulokwe volunteered comment. We here as our colleagues will continue to keep the flag flying and will encourage all other females out there, come out, contribute your service to the nation. Arutile is just one of many of us and will continue to give in our best in the nation building. The chief of the air staff also inaugurated a newly constructed 18 by 2 bedroom flats for senior non-commissioned officers and a water treatment plant. In Portacourt, Robinson, Delateide, NTA News. Now, looking at safety on our roads, the Federal Road Safety Corps is aligning its operations within the resolution of the 74th session of United Nations General Assembly aimed at achieving 50% reduction in road carnage from 2021 to 2030. Abu Bakr Usman Akwanga reports that the commitment is part of the Corps' top management review session for the last quarter of the year. 2020. Impact of auto crashes on Nigerian road is constituting huge threat to road users, including property worth millions of naira, owing to a number of devastating factors such as deplorable roads, insecurity, and violation of traffic rules. This narrative is where the hierarchy of the call is changing, with priority to effective security network, passengers' safety, and achieving 2030 global road safety target. We'll embark on aggressive public enlightenment, aggressive enforcement, and we'll collaborate with stakeholders to provide a platform for us to do a review about what we've done. To see where we need to rejig our processes. Call Marshal Boboyo Yemi says the call is determined to strengthen all processes and programs as captured in Goal 4 of the core corporate strategic goals 2020 and beyond. The call already the call is already positioning itself 
as a lead agency in road safety management to infuse the principles of the second decade of action for road safety 2021 to 2013 to the nation's approaches in road safety management. The call marshal appealed to Nigerians to avoid unnecessary travels while appreciating the efforts of President Muhammad Buhari, security agencies and government of Nasra State in ensuring the release of adopted FRSC personnel in Abuja, Abubakar Usman Akwanga, NT News. Let's pause here in Abuja and let Adiola feed us with more stories from our Lagos Network Center. Adiola. Thank you, Yere. The repair works on the third mainland bridge has entered its night week as the contractors are preparing for the replacement of bearings under the bridge. Dotsun Oguyemi has the report. It is the ninth week since the closure of the third mainland bridge as work progresses on the surface of the bridge with the replacement of expansion joints. The first phase of replacing identified joints on the Lagos Island to Ogoronshoki bound lane has reached advanced stages, allowing the contractor to shift attention to repairs under the bridge with the replacement of damaged bearings. This is to be done with hydraulic jacks to hold the bridge for the bearings to be replaced. We have to install two jacks every column on top of it and then raise up the deck of the bridge of about half centimeter. This will allow, this thing will allow us to remove the, the old bearings that is damaged and put the new one. They will remove the old one and put the new bearings, they are all on ground. So we are not slacking, we will make sure that there is no extension of time. That six months that we carry out the fire closure will not be extended beyond. The Federal Control of Work says the project is well on course for its timely delivery. In Lagos, Dotson Ogmiemi, NTA News. Now, even as the country is gradually flattening the COVID-19 curve, more attention and sensitization on the virus cannot be overemphasized. This was witnessed when the Federal Road Safety Corps launched kiosks as well as shared public enlightenment flyers to the motoring public in Lagos. Imali Ayotokide has the details. Lagos State, the epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic, is still experiencing daily recorded cases among other states in Nigeria. Good health and hygiene, maintenance of social distancing, and the use of face masks, especially in public, have been stressed as some of the COVID-19 protocols to beat the virus as a way of curbing the spread of COVID-19, thereby reducing the number of lives lost daily to the deadly virus while reducing road traffic crashes. The Federal Road Safety Corps, in collaboration with a non-governmental organization, launched a COVID-19 campaign kiosk, 500 pieces of reflective jackets, as well as flyers for public enlightenment in Lagos and Ogun State. This donation is timely and we are well appreciated by the Corps. Uh, it's coming at a time when the Ember Month campaign have started with the team. Driving safe, staying safe. We do not take this donation lightly. We deeply appreciate it and it's going to be put in good use. Federal road safety, by the nature of their work, they interact with people every day. And we felt they are better positioned to be able to enlighten the public. And that is why this partnership. The FRSC further appealed to motorists and road users to desist from vices that may put their lives in danger this ember months. In Lagos, Imoli Ayotukidi, NTA News. Those are our stories. Another break back and now before rejoining Iyere in Abuja.
Sensitivity is a short, sharp pain that people experience when they have something hot or cold getting to the nerve of the tooth. If the sensitivity is left alone, it may get worse. Dentists recommend Sensodyne. It's able to calm the nerve of the tooth. The proof's in the results. It works. Sensitivity is a short, sharp pain that people experience when they have something hot or cold getting to the nerve of the tooth. If the sensitivity is left alone, it may get worse. Dentists recommend Sensodyne. It's able to calm the nerve of the tooth. The proof's in the results. It works. Guess what? What? I scored a hat trick today. Cool. Wow. And how did you save it? Just do your hands like mm. this. And hold your nose like this. Body odor is caused by germs. That's why you need the new improved Dettol Cool Soap, which protects against 99.9% .9 odor causing germs with an extra burst of menthol freshness. Dettol, be 100% sure. <laughs> Beginning. As you prepare everyone for the day ahead, just anything is not enough. Only you make breakfast special, creamy, tasty, with vitamins and nutrients we need for a delightful, healthy start. So start your day right with Hollandia Evap. Right nutrients for a healthy breakfast. Make a load recharge card and beg. Find the money. You intended to win for the nine mobile mega millions pro more. One million naira for one person every day for 90 days. Two smartphones every hour, every day for 90 days. Ten million naira star price leader. New customers just come with side or buy a new line. And we go some of you free one gigabyte plus 500 naira a time. So make you the recharge 200 naira or more. Make you for the win. Nine mobile. Who says we have to go back to normal? What if we choose to be open? and say, I will never call my job unimportant again. I refuse to be a stranger in my own living room. I'll lead like a woman. And I stand by every word I say. Make my vote count. Make my voice heard today. See, I'll never forget how much stronger we are together. I'll carry that in my heart forever. We'll weather the storm. So I'll be open like never before. How hot is she? Maybe a seven. Is he? 8.5. Whoa, how hot is she? Very hot. Pick me. Just pick me, baby. Come pick me, girl. Man, I'm all ready for you. Mmm, so tasty. He's so lucky. Stop being jealous, man. <laughs> Mini me. Taste the fun. Glad to have you back. President Muhammadu Buhari felicitates with former governor of Imo State, Owili Ruchas Anayo Kurucha, on his 58th birthday, joining friends and family to celebrate the consummate entrepreneur and philanthropist whose kindness cuts across the nation. President Buhari shares the moment of joy with political associates of Owili Ukurucha, senator representing Imo West Senatorial District and the 9th Assembly. The president believes Senator Okorocha's large heart and detrabalized outlook on the country will continue to stand him out. He prays Almighty God to grant him longer life and good health to keep serving the country and humanity. Meanwhile, the Progressive Governors Forum has joined all Nigerians to celebrate Oweli Rochas Okorocha, Senator representing Olu Zun of Imo State and former chairman of the Progressive Governors Forum on his 58th birthday. The forum's chairman and governor of Kebi State, Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, in a statement acknowledged and commend his leadership, vision and commitment to United Prosperous Nigeria and that the leadership of the APC and the founding member of the forum and chairman between November 2013 and May 2019. Similarly, the APC governors felicitate with Senator Oluremi Tinubu, wife of the APC national leader Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed, on her 60th birthday, describing her as one who represents a unifying and rallying point for all, particularly 
members of the progressive family. President Muhammadu Buhari has also felicitated with the Deputy Governor of Plata State, Professor Sonny Tude. On the occasion of his 70th birthday, the President, in a statement, described the renowned scholar and author as an achiever and distinguished grassroots politician, urging him to remain committed in contributing to the development of his state and that the All Progressives Congress and continue to be a role model as a former university teacher and vice chancellor. Similarly, Governor Samuel Lalung also celebrates his deputy, Professor Tiude, at 70, describing him as an achiever and accomplished gentleman. Governor Lalung said the celebrant his distinguished, has distinguished himself as a scholar of repute, university administrator and patriotic politician who has exhibited high sense of diligence, loyalty and excellence in all assignments. Away from felicitations now, Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, says the federal government will work closely with federal lawmakers from Adamawa State to attract more dividends of democracy to the state towards improving the living conditions of indigents. The SGF, who studied this when he met with members of Adamawa APC caucus in the National Assembly, urged all party members in the state to close ranks and pull together for APC to regain control of the state. Adama is uh, predominantly an APC state uh, and we have learned from some few missteps that we took and uh, uh, going forward we are going to address those things. In terms of uh, uh, collaboration with the leadership of the National Assembly, we want to ensure that uh, uh, henceforth whatever we do back at home has some elements of ownership and we also looked at the spectrum of empowering our people and also creating uh, capacity for them. And to see how we can work together, synergize together with the executives, to see how we can collaborate and ensure that at least before we go into election 2023, we are firm and uh, really ready for that. The federal lawmakers were accompanied by members of Adamawa APC ESCO during the cuts of visit to the SGF. And on health, beyond declaring Nigeria a polio-free country by the World Health Organization, health workers have been reminded that a victory can be sustained by strengthening all routine immunization services. Emmanuel Ayumiro reports that the Ministry of Health, Dr. Osagi Haniri, gave this advice at a polio-free eradication celebration in Abuja while reiterating government's determination to eradicate other diseases in the country. After the milestone achievement, a new tax was placed before the health sector by the World Health Organization, which required all children under five years to be vaccinated against preventable diseases. Meeting this tax is another challenge that the Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Haniri, says is possible if resources are dedicated especially to high-risk areas. We are working on strengthening the primary health care, on restructuring it, and for that we need to work very closely, very, very closely with the states, with the local governments, with the communities, and with the public media. We will not rest on our hearts to ensure that necessary capacity is built. The National Primary Health Care Development Agency is already working towards the clarion call for the establishment of at least one functional primary health care center in every world in Nigeria. So we're glad that uh, because of these resources uh, pres uh, provided by President Muhammad Buhari, we'll be able to deliver quality primary health care uh, for all Nigerians. The ministry should dispense with the current posture of apartheid and embrace everybody, treat everybody properly, and reduce crisis. To encourage more dedication to the fight against preventable diseases, awards were given to deserving individuals. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. The message of paying proper attention to children as well as adequate care for their hygiene and development was what the Federal Ministry of Women Affairs took to indigent women of Ushafa in Bwari Area Council of the FCT. The minister, Pauline Tallinn, also flagged off distribution of diapers to women in the six area councils of the FCT. The report. 
The burden of childbearing can be compared to none, and when the child finally arrives, child upbringing becomes another hurdle to cross, as most women find it almost difficult to cater for the basic needs of their children. Diaper is one of such needs, you will agree with me. It is against this backdrop that the Federal Minister of Women Affairs took baby care items such as diapers to indigent women of Ushafa in Buari Era Council of the FCT. Child health is all embracing as it includes every area of a child's life and has a profound impact on the future development of our children, which means more care should be given to a child as it represents a phase of life with great potentials for them to grow and develop. The distribution is to cut across the six area councils of the Federal Capital Territory. Let's take a quick break now. The network news continues shortly. Life. The entire family of Anyangu Amadi Mbata Akwara of Umutike Ezogba Emekuku in Oweri North Local Government Area of Imo State announces the exit of our matriarch, Ezinne Catherine Ebere Bulam Anyangu Ni Ugoji. She lived 92 years. Burial arrangement. Thursday, 24th September 2020. Service of songs at her residence, Umutike Ezogba Emekuku. Time, 7 p.m. Friday, 25th September 2020, body leaves Holy Rosary Hospital, Emekuku, to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Parish, Emekuku, time 9 a.m. Funeral Mass at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Parish, Emekuku, Oweri, Imo State, time 10 a.m. Interment follows immediately after Mass at her son's residence, Umuapara, Ezoba, Emekuku, for family only, time 1 p.m. Sunday, 27th September 2020, out in Mass at Our Lady of Mount Carmel Catholic Parish, Emekuku, Oweri, Imo State, time 9.15 a.m. May her gentle soul rest in the bosom of our Lord, Amen. Reginald Anyangu, son for the family. With total submission to God Almighty, the family of Tufamide Rukunasim announces the passing away of their father, husband, brother, uncle, cousin, and friend. Late barrister, 